Vietnam, an inaccessible and hostile land where the terrain ran the gamut from muddy deltas to impenetrable jungles to windblown highlands and where the enemy wore no uniform and was often impossible to detect. This was the first war not only to treat the chopper as a weapon but to place it at the top of the military's arsenal and make it a number one tool of attack. The chopper's new reputation seemed like an overnight success story after what was actually decades, in fact, centuries of a slow, painful process of development. A mere decade before, the chopper had earned itself a tenuous place in military history as a transport unit that could get troops and gear in and out of tight places. More importantly, it could evacuate the wounded and get them off the battlefield in minutes rather than hours or days. Still. The chopper had a long way to go. Its struggle for its place in history began not with World War II or Korea, but centuries before, dating as far back as Leonardo da Vinci, who created a design for the first chopper out of a helical screw and starch linen. Man was fascinated by the concept of vertical flight, and for the next several centuries, there were numerous experiments with what was usually perceived by skeptics as a frivolous and very expensive toy. Early inventors like Igor Sikorsky quickly began to see the advantages of rotary-winged craft over fixed-wing for use in warfare. But prior to World War II, they could only envision the clumsy, awkward machines in civilian dress or as battlefield observation platforms or reconnaissance platforms for naval surface vessels or submarines. It wasn't until the tail end of World War II that a few choppers finally saw action and their real potential could be fully appreciated. But it was Korea that set the stage for the chopper's evolution and guaranteed that things would change overnight. Igor Sikorsky and Larry Bell, father of the famous Huey, came up with improvements that included a simple construction and classic design and a piston engine giving it a maximum speed of 92 miles per hour and a stabilizing system to maintain the rotor's horizontal position. The outbreak of the Korean War put Bell's helicopters to work for the first time. The Army H-13D and the Marine Corps HTL-4 operated in the capacity of liaison, transport, and cable laying. Most importantly, though, the Bell chopper was pressed into service for casualty evacuation, making it an indispensable tool of future warfare. Korea had proved the value of the chopper. It was the first time in the history of warfare the wounded could count on being rescued from areas previously inaccessible to fixed-wing craft. Over 8,500 casualties were rescued from the front line in 1951 alone. And by the time we entered Vietnam, the whole concept of chopper use was suddenly revolutionized. Larger bodies with tandem rotors and the unmistakable banana fuselage carried dozens of troops and thousands of pounds of cargo. H-21 Shawnees did their share of troop hauling, but the real workhorse was the Chinook. With its all-weather heavy lift design, its ability to carry up to 40 troops and airlift complete missile systems. The Chinook not only transported troops and supplies, but actually acted as a flying casualty ward, airlifting wounded and recovering downed aircraft. It took only a small leap of the imagination to begin to see the advantages of arming the chopper and making it a true weapon of war. And Vietnam was clearly the right place to do it.
Vietnam is rightly called the first chopper war. The most recognizable symbol of that war became the famous UH-1 Huey. In a treacherous land, air mobility, enhancing the element of surprise, proved to be the key to success on the battlefield. The Huey could get in and out of inaccessible places. It could land on mountaintops, or if need be, hover above a difficult terrain, allowing the men to jump out onto the ground below. By 1964, 850 Hueys had been pressed into service. Homing in on color-coded clouds of smoke, Hueys mercifully descended from the sky to perform Operation Dust Off, airlifting countless wounded from the battlefield. The Huey set more records for speed, maneuverability, and reliability than any other chopper. Guided by ground commanders, the Huey, with its unique capabilities, could be counted on to respond unfailingly to the needs of the troops. It not only transported supplies to units stranded in remote or inaccessible places, it also ensured the quick and efficient landing of troops, along with their evacuation before the enemy could get there. The only problem was the Huey's vulnerability to attack from ground fire. The first response was to arm them with light machine guns operated from the open door. As the size of the weapon grew, so did the Huey's strength as air artillery. Door gunners became a new breed of soldier, risking their lives daily as they leaned out of choppers in a tight turn to lay a round of suppressive fire over a dangerous landing zone, so the troops just landed there could take their ground. As the war escalated, so did the need for better armament. Vietnam single-handedly changed the way we thought about war and the way we were going to have to fight it. Between 1965 and 1967, American forces in Vietnam increased almost tenfold. The numbers steadily continued to rise until they reached more than half a million men. Augmented by units from Australia and New Zealand, and combined with Arvan troops from the Republic of Vietnam, the Viet Cong faced a mighty adversary. But the unwieldy terrain and the invisibility of the VC, not to mention the heat and the insects, made it difficult to beat the enemy back and to keep him there for any length of time. Charlie was both unpredictable and relentless in his onslaught. The nature of the war in Vietnam turned it into a battle that had to be fought from the sky. The arming of the Huey, the next obvious step. It was hard to imagine that in 1962, the Huey was only an unarmed medevac unit whose value depended on its service as an air ambulance and its ability to transport men and gear to and from the battlefield. For by 1967, the chopper found itself transformed into a virtual gunship. It soon became the chosen vehicle for the Army's Air Cavalry, a mobile, maneuverable, and well-armed group whose air support proved crucial to the success of their ground-based operations. 
In fact, they couldn't have survived without it. Gone was the lone door gunner, armed only with his machine gun and protected by the capability of his pilot. Instead, the UH-1D was armed with rockets and exterior machine guns rigged right to its fuselage. Its silhouette became a terrifying sight to those on the ground. With speeds ranging up to 120 miles per hour and the ability to fly the nap of the earth taking advantage of natural covering, the Huey made possible the long hoped for dream of complete vertical envelopment. Its potential for evasive action was now unlimited and so was the effectiveness of its firepower. Flying at treetop levels and at variable speeds, its weaponry controlled from the cabin, the Huey was now a machine capable of highly directed firepower. It could literally stand above its prey and fire with pinpoint accuracy. Through the war, the Huey and all its variations was continually adapted to counter the mounting aggression of the enemy. In 1967, though, a new Huey was born. It was the Huey Cobra, and it was the first helicopter specifically designed as a weapon. Officially known as the AH-1G, the Cobra entered service in impressive numbers aboard Navy vessels, where they were unpacked from crates, assembled, tested, and flown within hours. Highly efficient and extremely versatile, up to 26 Cobras a day could be put into action. Like a cowboy riding shotgun, the Cobra races ahead of the troop carrying copters and prepares the landing zone, pounding it with a barrage of rockets, miniguns, and grenades. Possessing the firepower of a 38-round howitzer barrage, the Huey continues to lay round after round of suppressive fire, followed by a smoke screen for extra safety. The Cobra keeps up its assault throughout the landing operation, delivering instant fire for effect exactly where needed. Once the troops are landed, the Cobra goes on to provide direct fire support from several different positions, confusing the enemy and keeping him off balance. 
Working in close conjunction with the ground commander, the Cobra fire team leader is capable of positioning missiles within meters of the troops. Designed to live in the fields, simplicity and survivability under all conditions were the keys to the Cobra's high operational readiness record. It was an invaluable tool in ensuring the quick and accurate placement of firepower wherever needed. While the UH-1 was fitted with machine guns and air-to-surface rockets on the sides of its fuselage, the Huey Cobra was made even more impervious with the addition of miniguns in swiveling turrets, augmented by rockets loaded into multi-tube launchers, and later, grenade launchers, and the even more terrifying tow anti-tank missiles. The concept of Huey Cobra as a fighting machine rather than a mere transport vehicle was emphasized by the fact that the gunner's seat was placed before the pilots. The Huey Cobra with its proven mechanical system was capable of higher speeds and longer missions. It was quieter than its predecessor, and the awesome firepower it packed earned it the name of the Snake from the men who flew it, and Whispering Death from the Viet Cong. Continually countering the tactics of the enemy, the Cobra learned to strike at night, effectively disrupting troop movement and resupply operations. Never in the history of warfare had there been a more reliable, versatile, and deadly piece of equipment in the military's arsenal. Choppers served a variety of functions during the war. While the Cobra carried on assault missions overland, naval choppers fought their own battles at sea. One of their most important roles was search and rescue. A rescue chopper is quickly readied for takeoff. It immediately heads for an assigned area to lie in wait near fighter routes to and from enemy targets. It's followed by spads, which not only provide it with air cover, but spot approaching enemy forces and drive them away. Also known as the Sky Raider, the spad is the attack chopper's equal in terms of both reliability and versatility. It can guarantee accurate ordnance delivery in an attack as well as speed and mobility in a rescue mission. Though he doesn't know it yet, a jet fighter pilot is about to go down. The search and rescue commander on board the destroyer coordinates the mission. The chopper crew nears the distress area. They get ready, rigging their sling. Finally, they spot him. A crewman is lowered into the water.
They bring in their man and head home. Another dangerous mission completed. Vietnam demanded the necessity of combined arms more than any previous war. The chopper's effectiveness was continually increased by its strategic combination with other tools of combat. Just as the search and rescue chopper teamed up with the SPAD, the Cobra would later team up with the Aerial Scout to hone its skills as both hunter and killer. This new AH-1G, operating with tactics pioneered in Vietnam, works in tandem with the Aerial Scout, officially known as the OH-58D. Together they maximize mobility and flexibility not only in terms of applying combat power when and where most needed, but enabling our forces to alter plans to capitalize on opportunities leading to success in battle. In addition to working with other helicopters, the scout becomes the eyes of the ground artillery commander. The crew maneuvers into position for artillery engagement. With the chopper safely concealed, the masked mounted sight above the rover scans the battlefield for target opportunities. Once again, technology meets the needs of an increasingly complicated warfare by providing for the greater specialization of both men and weaponry. With sophisticated thermal sensing devices, targets can be tracked on TV monitors day or night. An incredible array of intelligence is suddenly available at the touch of a button. The target is spotted. Its location is stored in the computer and transmitted to the crew by radio. The fire direction team takes over. The OH-58D's laser designation capability guides precision munitions to point-type targets. Artillery copperhead rounds, Hellfire missiles, and smart bombs may all be accurately guided by the scout. The eyes of the aerial scout allows for the engagement of six times as many targets. It saves ammunition, conserves time and manpower, and enhances the element of surprise. It's the ideal sidekick for both artillery and the attack chopper. For the Cobra, the scout's ability to search out the enemy translates into almost immediate target handover as the Cobra can then use its airborne laser tracker to hone in on the target and destroy it. With the promise of increased tank warfare in the future though, the Cobra would need more than another pair of eyes. It would need superior armament and it eventually found it in the tow missile system. The coupling of the chopper with the tank was another development to come out of Vietnam. Current support tactics call for the attack chopper to fly with the advancing tank column, essentially functioning as point man. Together, choppers and tanks can provide coordinated support. Heavily armed, the attack chopper virtually becomes a flying tank, enabling it to minimize dangers from the ground. In Vietnam, the firepower packed by the gunship was evident even before its first flight. The Lam San Offensive in spring 1972 was the first tow assault on NVA tanks. Cobra choppers with tow missile systems and advanced laser fire systems fired as many as 82 missiles and took out dozens of tanks, proving the chopper's value as an anti-armor weapon. The Tow Cobra is the latest step in the Army's gunship inventory. While the Huey had been continually adapted as the war went along, the Cobra was specifically designed as a weapon. And now, the Tow Cobra offers even greater specialization, including a unique helmet sight, subsystem, allowing both pilot and gunner to interface with the weaponry and to direct fire from chin turreted miniguns or grenade launchers by using their helmet sights. 
This enables the pilot to suppress small arms fire while the gunner is free to engage hard point targets with the towed missile system. Working together, they maximize rapid target acquisition while minimizing exposure and loss. Operating with radio silence and moving on the nap of the earth, the tow Cobra is the ultimate tactical helicopter, combining firepower and mobility sufficient to alter the outcome of tank warfare. Tank busting operations become the order of the day. A recent update of the successful Cobra family is the even more powerful Super Cobra, a twin-engine Cobra designed specifically for the U.S. Marines. Formed in battalion strength, the Tow Cobra proved to be one of the Army's potent means of projecting anti-tank power. When coordinated with artillery and other direct or indirect fire, its strength is awesome. Later Cobras sported 20mm and 30mm cannon kits, carrying up to a thousand rounds of ammunition and firing at 750 shots per minute. These advanced armament systems have greatly expanded the Cobra's mission performance, providing increased standoff capability. The attack helicopter is a combat-proven weapons system. It remains current in deployment by U.S. forces around the world. But the real future of the helicopter lies not only in improved arms, but very possibly in something called the tilt rotor converter plane. Part chopper, part airplane, the tilt rotor brings together the assets of both craft, combining several flight tasks at once. It can hover almost indefinitely land on steep inclines and turn in confined spaces. It can take off from hover to 113 knots, completely converting from a chopper to turboprop plane in a matter of seconds. The enormous maneuverability and flexibility of the tilt rotor offers obvious advantages to the military. The tilt rotor has already proven valuable in facilitating the refueling of both helicopters and planes in flight due to its ability to match the speed of a variety of craft. The tilt rotor's ability to use terrain masking techniques, low noise, and reduced infrared and radar profile mean tilt rotors can virtually melt into their surroundings. Properly armed, they may well point the way to the gunship of the future. From a 19th century sketch to a modern day gunship, the helicopter has proven itself the key to modern military mobility and an essential factor in success on the battlefield as well as to the welfare of the men engaged there. 
Its place in military history cannot be denied, nor can its value to the future.